Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Amy and in my channel I talk about plants and my life and journey with my plants. In today's video, I want to show you guys some plants that are currently growing in my very cold and very dark house. So I know you guys have heard me complain about this like so much. I used to live in an apartment in an apartment unit on the fourth floor and I had like beautiful like south facing window and then I think it was like a west or east. So in like all corners of my house, I had so much light coming in. But then we found this home, which we really, really loved. Unfortunately, and then we moved into this home. But unfortunately, this home is mostly north facing and it's a, a much harder space to heat up. Um, so my plants had to kind of uh, adapt to this new environment and so so did I like my expectations I really needed to adjust my expectations of how my plants could grow in this space you know what I feel like I have come to terms with um, the environment that I have I use supplemental grow lights I don't give my plants any added heat because I feel like the grow lights are already like hitting our hydro bills, um, you know, uh, giving it quite a dent. I don't really want to add more to the, to the bill, especially because I'm not working. It's really like the burden kind of like gets on my husband's shoulders. So I don't really want to add more burden for him. Although last week we had like a really, really cold spell. Um, temperature went down to like minus... 15 I think um, overnight so I borrowed the space heater and from my stepmom and then we kept it in um, upstairs with a lot of my plants so yeah I've noticed that since the temperature has dropped most of my Hoyas are just not growing anymore I think that's also the reason why I'm having root rot issues because they're not active, actively growing and I'm not really adjusting my uh, watering style uh, to to the like sort of a dormancy um, that's what got me into a lot of trouble with their roots so I'm trying to be very mindful of like how I water now but that said I'm noticing that there are quite a few plants in my collection that are um, really kind of unaffected by the lower light well I shouldn't say that they are affected by the lower light and the colder temperature but they are still able to grow uh, throughout this time of like um, low temperature and low light and I'm really appreciating that from them. I want to highlight those plants for you guys and uh, I hope you enjoy these plants. Uh, I grew up quite a few actually like usual Amy style. Uh, maybe the first ones I want to show you uh, let's show you the Calatheas. Actually this one is a uh, Tenenthi. I've really rarely show you guys this one. This is the Tenenthi um, Amagris. I love this plant. I used to, I was not able to find it anywhere for a really, really long time locally until one day it was like in my local garden center. So I picked up three and I potted them together. And they have since then just continued to grow despite the season and despite the temperature and the light condition, they get medium to low light, but they do get, they are right next to a humidifier. So they get um, about 65-70% relative humidity um, but yeah this guy has just been one of the easiest going plants ever like um, in my entire collection not just like in the Calathea group uh, it did have a bout of thrips so I am kind of on top of when I say on top I check I check on it once in a while and like rinse out the leaves so that they don't like infestations don't like become huge but I have not seen any thrips on this for a year now so that's pretty good yeah I found thrips last year uh, on this guy but yeah it's just a very steady and beautiful grower um, every time I look inside this pot there's just like some new growth happening let me just try to find one for you guys and this is the one thing I really love about like this group of plants. The way their new leaves emerge is super adorable. It's like a, a tube, kind of like a rolled up message. I really like that. And then it just 
um, unfurls and, and it opens, unrolls the tube. It's really very sweet. Um, so yeah, last year during uh, when this guy had the thrips, it was when I was quite new at taking care of the group of calatheas. I'm gonna put this one aside. Quite new at taking care of calatheas. I didn't realize that they could, they are susceptible to thrips, but by now I should know all plants are. Um, so then this other plant that I really, really love, I lost quite a few calatheas and this other, the next one I'm gonna show you also was really like, when I looked, every single leaf was just like, had a group of like baby thrips. Um, but because I love it so much, I really stayed on top of like isolating it, treating it, and it has finally, like, it hasn't had any thrips for a really long time now. Although I say that now, I'm gonna look and it's probably gonna find like multiple, but no, whoops. Um, so this is the Calathea vaginata. I think, yeah, I, when I originally got it, it's just got lots of pink, uh, kind of like this one. And it was a super tiny baby calathea uh, when it was like under attack by thrips. So, and it has since like over the past year grown much, much bigger. I just love this plant so much. Yeah, I'm so proud of it. It just, it has been staying in my Mills Bowl cabinet uh, and now the fa in, in, in one of my IKEA cabinets for humidity and also for like keeping it away from other plants that might infect it because I just wanted to stay healthy and stay well. She is dropping Leca like no one's business. Um, and then there are three, four, four plants in here. Some of them are just like new shoots from the mother plant. Uh, and I can see one, two, three. Uh, three new leaves coming out. Like you can see there's one here and one, one over here. And then a baby one, the baby, the baby like little guy here has a new plant coming out too. Ooh, I should show you the back of this plant. It's like true Calathea fashion. It's got that beautiful uh, pink, color in the back. A lot of them has like a maroon, like darker maroon color in the back, but this one has like more of a pink color in the back. And the front is just like beautiful and silvery. And when it's backlit, it's just like, it's just so, so gorgeous. Anyway, so that's another Calathea that's, yeah. So like the whole group of Calatheas um, have been, I've noticed like it doesn't really get affected by the cold temperature. Um, my house gets down to like, I would say in the evening, it could get down to maybe like 15 degrees Celsius. Um, but they are, they are still growing. And so, so is this guy. I have shown you guys this guy multiple times, Calathea Yellow Fusion. Look at that. It's so cute. It just has been it was imported with no roots and a cutting with no roots and it just has been rooting and growing uh, throughout this like fall, winter season. Really, really happy with these guys. I think those are all the calatheas that I have brought over. The uh, next group I want to highlight is actually, it's a, I find it to grow really, really slowly in my environment. But because it's a really easy going plant, I don't really need to water it often and I just leave it be and it's still just growing really well. And I mean, it's growing. <laughs> so I want to highlight uh, the group of um, Agolima. I think this is an Agolima Valentine. The newest leaf is just so adorable. Like the, such a cute pink. Um, I had switched up its environment before. It was under a grow light. And this is the kind of color it was putting out, like much darker pink. And now that it's it's not getting as much light, I'm noticing that the new new leaf is much paler, which which I like more. This is the as you can see, like the the older leaves are lighter, paler in pink. That's kind of why I wanted to pick it up because it's I like that nice little pink blush color. But because this is the first new leaf since I've moved it to no grow light. I'm gonna continue observing and then I'll let you guys know if that's that if that's completely true that, that the low light is producing this type of color. 
And then the next one is another Egonima, but I don't really know what um, what type it is. I just really loved it. My friend saw it at a garden center, and I love this like half moon leaf. And I don't know. I just think it's such a interesting, beautiful kind of confetti looking uh, plant. So I asked her to pick it up for me, and it's working on this adorable like super interesting variegation and beautiful leaf here too so i'm happy with these guys as well and then the next one the next group i want to highlight i don't have a lot of these plants but i have noticed um the few that i have they are all still growing and one of them is even like kind of coming back from dying in this weather so uh, so I want to highlight this group. This is uh, my begonia. This one I will put the name on the screen because I can never remember the name. This one I almost gave up on it. It wasn't doing really well, but then I repotted it and gave it more like um, dedicated attention and it's coming back. Um, you can see there's a little new leaf um, and it's flowering. This is a new leaf as well. So pretty. And like, you guys can't really see, uh, but the back, the way it's backlit, it's so beautiful. Yeah, I really love this one, especially when I picked it up. It reminded me so much of the Discoria Discolor that I have been looking for. Um, but I think it's, this plant is just really beautiful. I love that shade of green as well. There you go. So like, and in terms of begonia, I've shown you guys this plan last time, but I just want to show you guys again, um, the begonia tamaya. So this guy, um, uh, tamaya, I just watered it. I was noticing like uh, the leaf curling a little bit and that signals that it's pretty thirsty, but these are the new leaves that it's put out. It's closer, it's like reaching itself to the grow light. And I wonder if, I don't know, because the previous leaves have no, um, the, the dots are not very obvious, but the new leaves are growing to be, you can really see the, the spots. So I wonder if like a little bit more light is bringing that out for it. But as a plan, it's just like glossy and beautiful and like actively growing. And I'm just really happy with this one that it's able to grow so well in this environment. The next plant I want to highlight is um, this guy. This is the um, asparagus fern. And when we showed you guys this plant last time, it has so much yellowing and I just thought it was a goner, but I don't know what happened. Like as temperature got colder, it, um, it stopped yellowing and it's like, it, it's working on this long like tendril. I guess it's reaching to the grow light too. Maybe I'm giving it a little bit more light recently, but yeah, I think it's making a comeback. And, and maybe because my husband highlighted it that he likes it so much that I have been uh, more mindful of my care for this guy, but yeah, but it seems to be a happier plan than like a month ago when it was uh, the, when it wasn't as cold as it is right now. So the next plant I want to highlight is my Philodendron Majestic. I think it's a um, cross between, between who? Uh, yeah, Sauteroy and Virocosum. Right, so you know what I have noticed actually? My Virocosum wasn't doing very well in the grill tent during the summer when it was really hot and um, I pulled it out of the grow tent and it seems to be like prefer the cooler, the cooler temperature. It doesn't seem to need like a super high amount of humidity. Um, so my Viracusum is doing okay as well. It's like having a comeback. And so I pulled, I have a few cuttings of Majestic and I pull one out and I'm growing it out just in this like normal, like room environment with low temperature and low, hum like low, to medium humidity and um and it has been growing like this was the the first leaf that i that i had it was like a small cutting and it has like slowly been upsizing although this one as the new leaf was unfurling 
I caught an, an adult thrip. So every day I've been checking on this one and rinsing it and um, to like eliminate the like hatching uh, thrip. But uh, it seems to be doing like it doesn't mind this like cold and um, regular humidity. And I had just recently added this like the lazy moss pole. And hopefully like with a little bit more support, the coming leaves will be bigger. The next plant I want to highlight, we only have four plants left. The next plant I want to highlight, I love this plant. I originally got a cutting from my stepmom and I really, really love it. So then I bought a huge pot um, of this guy. This is the a lipstick plant, a Mona Lisa. Mine is not blooming right now and my stepmom's is like blooming profusely in her sunroom at the moment. I don't know if it's because it's not warm enough for it to bloom, but to, to be honest, I'm not too crazy about its flowers. They're okay, but I love the foliage. They're super shiny and they remind me of a Hoya. I, a while back, I had to take a lot, of, I had to trim it so much down because I severely underwatered this guy and all the like trailing bits were all so, so wrinkly and just not very beautiful. So I cut off all those cuttings and it has just been like coming back with a vengeance. It grows back so well. This guy does need a little bit more light and it is so thirsty. It just like loves to drink and yeah, that's why I underwater it so much. I had actually set up a self-watering um, situation for it with like a cloth um, inside the pot and 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 then I put a water pot like underneath it but the cloth kind of disintegrated into nothing so now I just have to um, stay on top of watering this guy but I'm letting it trail but I'm also kind of thinking I want to like uh, take some cuttings and pot in the back so then it's like a fuller plan there you go that one and then Oh, I really want to show you guys this one because it's growing. I heard that it's a super slow growing plant, but, but it has been growing pretty steadily for me. And the new leaf that it's put out, it's still quite new. So it's like kind of silvery. It's so beautiful. Um, and that is my Monstera Edinsoniae. I guess it's kind of hard to see it like against the netting. But like, look at this new leaf and the like amazing fenestration can you see yeah it's so uh not focusing right but i'm so scared of hurting it focus there you go she's so gorgeous and just like actually looking really really silvery and shiny just so pretty i added the same lazy moss pole for it it yeah for it for it to grow more roots into and then support it in like a climbing fashion yeah i heard this guy easily sends out runner if the environment is not right for it so i'm just really grateful that it has been um it has been agreeable with my the cold temperature in my home even though it's in a grow tent in the evening it still drops down to below like 16 degrees so but it has still been growing so i'm really grateful about that yeah the next one I want to show you, it's actually just a represent, representative for the group of plants that, that it is, and that is the Syngonium. This is a Syngonium mojito, and again, since I brought it home, it has had to endure really, really cold uh, temperature in my home. It's definitely not tropical uh, environment in my home, but it has been putting out new leaves. This is another new leaf it's working on. I think it's the second or third new leaf that it has been putting out. Just a um, super easy going plant and absolutely gorgeous. The last one, <laughs> the last one is this one I forgot because it's so big and I put it in such a heavy ceramic pot. This is the uh, Soderoi AFF and it uh, has been sitting on the bottom shelf by a north-facing north window and it has just been t doing totally fine uh, and still working on a bit of a new growth. So this has been pretty 
easy going since the winter. Um, although I think it's also because it's much more established than before. Uh, last year this time it would put out a new leaf and then drop a new leaf and it was staying at like um, as a two leaf or three leaf plant. Um, but now I think it's um, able to hold on to four leaves now. So hopefully next year this time when I talk to you guys it'll be a even fuller plant. I did take some stem cutting from it and I find that when you take a stem cutting, it stunts the growth of the mother plant. Regardless, it just, it's like of a huge assault to the plant and it slows, it slows the growth down in my experience. Uh, so I think that happened to this one, but overall it has been just really resilient and easy going and I, I really, really love it. There you go. So pretty. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it gives you some like inspiration of like what plants to bring to your home if you have similar conditions as I do. All right guys, I think that's everything for from me for now. Um, a little bit of life update. Uh, my husband surprised me with a treadmill for Christmas because I've been like really um, struggling with a way to like exercise quickly and uh, yeah, I'm just really grateful that he did that. We we fit it into our bedroom and I have been exercising almost daily, but it does like take up some time from me, right? I only have like such a short time and that I'm not like child caring. So um, my, the priorities of my life are kind of shifting and I'm still trying to balance of how to like make everything work, but I'm just really excited. This year, one of my resolutions is really to like exercise regularly, be healthier, be more active. Um, yeah, since I started this channel, I have put on, I think, maybe 25 pounds um, just from, I don't know, not breastfeeding anymore and not being as active, I think, as I, I used to be maybe. But yeah, I'm really excited for this year to be like focusing a more on my health. Would you guys share one of your New Year's resolutions with me? I would really be interested to hear. Um, anyway, so that's all from me today. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you guys soon again. Bye!